All right. So it's one o'clock. What's going on? I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez, here uh, on LaGuardia Web Radio. And today's show is Deborah Engel's exit interview. And uh, now, you know, it's interesting because my engineer, Chris Pope, told me to get, all, get, get everything right. This is our 100th show, by the way, folks. It's a big show, our 100th show together, uh, Chris and I. Uh, my, yes, my guest, Professor Deborah Engel of the Department of Health Sciences in the Division of Academic Affairs. And uh, Pro- Professor Engel will be retiring after many years of service, a good portion of which she spent as the chair of the College-Wide Curriculum Committee of the LaGuardia College Senate. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, and we, we played Brian Adams, summer of 69. Uh, <laughs> but really it was because, you know, uh, as you said, uh, those were the best years of my life, or these are the best years of your life, and uh, something you wanted to, sh- to uh, let everybody know for the show. Uh, and uh, we talked a little bit about the format. I, I wanted to start by talking, uh, give you a chance to talk a little bit about your background, you know, where you're from, your studies, and things like that. So why don't we begin there? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Hugo. So I was uh, born in upstate New York in Albany, actually in Colony. Um, right outside of Albany. And um, I went, uh, I started my education in Albany as a physical therapist assistant. I graduated in 1977. So I have never done anything except physical therapy. Um, Worked for about six years, decided to go back and continue and do my physical therapy degree. Uh, Went to University of Buffalo and then graduated from University of Buffalo in 1986. And I had some friends in Albany, or I, I mean, had some friends in New York and said, you know, why, why not try New York for one or two years just to, to live someplace different, to enjoy the city. And of course, here I am. <laughs> I've never left. <laughs> so I fell in love with New York. And um, through the years, I, uh, I started actually my career at Maimonides Medical Center in Brooklyn and um, met a wonderful, wonderful group of people worked there for 12 years. Um, During those years, I got my master's in exercise science because I wanted to specialize in cardiac and pulmonary rehab, which I did for many, many years. I was an intensive care therapist. I was a clinical director of outpatient cardiac rehab, and I was the assistant chief and then chief of the department. In the meantime, during that time in 1991, I was asked by a friend of mine Dean Feibel, <laughs> um, who has since retired, to come and do adjunct teaching at LaGuardia. So I, uh, there was a night program then. So I worked during the day, taught at night, um, finished my master's. And then in 1998, a full-time job opened up and my son was four at the time. I needed something more flexible, something where I didn't have to be in Brooklyn at eight o'clock in the morning for cardiac rehab. And so I joined the faculty in 1998 and have been here ever since. Uh, it, you know, it's it, well, you started sooner than I did. I started in 94, but I would have never run into you because I never came into the E. The, in those days, I would never go to the E building except once in a blue moon when the office would call me. We were over in the L building oh my at that yeah. time. So uh, how, did you, how did you know uh, Dean Feibel, Ann Feibel, who, who retired she retired like what two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. And actually, she and I worked together at Maimonides Medical Center. Uh, right. So that's where you. She and I that. knew each other since 1998, and um, she really encouraged me to start doing adjunct teaching, and then develop my skills, and then was you know able to you know you know have a um, full time position for me in '98. We also did our doctorate together. Um, we did our transitional doctorate in physical therapy degree, which is sort of the highest degree in physical therapy, um, which I needed here for promotion. <laughs> so she and right. I did a long distance um, uh, degree doctorate in physical therapy. It took us three and a half years, um, Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. So, you know, we were we were always buddies. And so it was great. We traveled back and forth and, you know, did all our, our clinical and intensives there and finished our DPT in 2003. And was she at that time, she was the chair of the department? She was actually the program director of physical therapy. Oh, that's And a- yeah, and I was faculty. And then, um, you know, when we finished our doctorate, I thought, okay, 
whew, now I can kind of relax a little bit. <laughs> you know, I had a small child and working full time doing my studies. And then Anne decided to become chair only if I would become program director. Wow. I thought, okay, get on the <laughs> get on the wave again. <laughs> and so I was program director of the physical therapist assistant program from 2003 until 2012 until I was offered the chair of the, the college, you know, Senate curriculum committee. And then um, I stepped down from pro program director and stepped into the chair position and continued to teach as faculty. All right. And yeah, again, you've, so you were the, you were chair. That's, I guess that's 10 years, right? As the chair of uh, as, curriculum committee. Yeah. Yeah. It's just 10 years. Yeah. And you, and you, I'm trying to remember 2012, that was, was it that long? Because that, that's about the time, I guess that's, I began full time, but it's just about the time that Pathways hit, right? That is correct. <laughs> so, so when I to... started on curriculum, uh, Pathways started, I believe, I started in September of 2012 and Pathways started in the early part, I think the early part of 2013. So yeah, not only was I trying to learn the ropes of curriculum, but now I had to reinvent and myself and, you know, kind of ride the, the pathways wave, which was a little bit contentious in the beginning because you know, it was, <laughs> that's it putting was it hard. mild. <laughs> Everybody was having a hard time kind of adjusting to it, but right. we did it, you know, and, um, you know, it's it, funny it because out and it, everybody got used to it and we, we just kind of rode with it, but pretty much every, everything in curriculum had to be redone. I mean, you know, at that point, probably we had close to 60 programs and everybody had to redesign their curricular framework and had to come through curriculum. So it was, was pretty tough. But I, I guess it helped because at that point, Anne was the, was the, was uh, she dean was. in academic affairs. Yes. And so she was overriding that. So the two of you had to work on those things together. We did. We did. We got through it. Yeah. It's funny because I went, at one point, I can't remember what was going on, but I went into my archives before Chris, because now with Chris as my engineer, what happens is every one of these shows, uh, besides being available on Twitch for, for two weeks, Chris uploads one copy to YouTube without the music, another audio copy to uh, SoundCloud, and then, the, and then a third copy is actually, or a fourth, uh, Thomas Cleary puts into the uh, institutional archives. So oh, people will be able to great. pull at these hundred episodes at any time they want. But in the old days when I used to just keep them like on flash drives and try to, yeah. at one point I even had I'd created like a community on Blackboard where people could join and then watch, listen to the shows because then, then they were only audio. I had one of Scott White, oh, you know, the, our former chair of the library, our right. former li chair of library. But he was also in on subcommittee that had to deal with pathways for and at some and somehow I got him to come on my show to talk about it, and uh, you know, but being Scott, he just really was able to kind of just talk about the mechanics of the stuff yeah. and not get into any of the politics that we were dealing with at the time, uh, which is pretty, uh, which you know, again is a tr is a tribute to him. Yeah, for sure. But uh, and you know, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's interesting that you're leaving now. And, uh, you know, uh, who's who's the chair of curriculum committee at this point? Uh, Priyanka is taking it over. Priyanka, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is something that's brewing, and it has been shared with the Senate through faculty governance leaders like uh, Christy Bruns and Rochelle Isaacs with the faculty council. But the new thing is going to be transfer. Yeah. And they're going to be looking at, uh, you know, how to how – to, how to streamline that and mm -hmm. i think it's going to call for something to happen between the senior and junior senior colleges and the community colleges and uh it's to be seen well but let's put it this way the board of trustees again is interested in you know having an impact on transfer rates between the cunies so we're just we're going to try to get ahead of it uh as far as having faculty input mm -hmm in what it's going to look like. But again, you know, the, the board of trustees is like, you know, pathways was what a five year process about, wasn't it? Yeah. It felt like it. Yeah. It, it was quite a while. Yeah. Which is actually, 
in the for in the in the mind of a board of trustees member is a long time. Right. I forget how many. I think they have like six, maybe th- two, three year terms or something like that. I don't know how long it is, but you know, five years is a long time to make change. And as I keep saying in these meetings uh, at the central office, you know, it took us fifty years to get into the issues we're having now with transfer. How are we going to solve those in one? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think, uh, D, you know, uh, Dion Miller, you know, who is, right. you know, replaced Anne. She's been terrific in yeah. really doing a lot of initiatives to promote smooth transfer. Um, she and Marsha have done a great job with articulation agreements, um, yeah. meeting with the other colleges um, and curriculum for a few years now. We've really tried to emphasize, you know, if someone wants to start a new course or if someone wants to revise their course to really be very, very sensitive to, can it transfer to another college? Does the description match that of the other college? Um, You know, if you want to do a new course, which we of course encourage, but where's it going to live? Um, And will the students be able to transfer it? Does it make sense? Um, So we've been really working on that for a while. Um, yeah, we're very sensitive to the, stu- you know, to students because, you know, we don't want to have them spend money, you know, unnecessarily and that we want them to be able to continue their education at a senior college. Right. Well, we, uh, sorry that we've gone off on this tangent. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> back to you. Curriculum is yeah. huge. <laughs> so it, it, it's, but it, you know, one of the things that happens is in your introduction, and this always happens when I tell people what, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, you start answering the second set of questions, which I would ask, which is the roles, you know, the, the different things you did here at the college. Uh, I mean, starting out as a teacher. Yeah. One of the, we, we obviously we have a very celebrated health sciences division. We do. We do. That uh, and the kids are kill each other trying to get into the nursing program. Is that the is that the case for PT as well? It it was traditionally. Um, right now, because of COVID, I think the numbers have dropped off. But yeah, we have. Um, you know, I think all the health sciences were, ve- you know, are very selective, and we have a ranking. We have a candidacy process, so it it is very competitive. How do you think that's going to get impacted by this money that's just come in? The five million that's supposed to generate three thousand. Uh, health professionals within whatever what is it a five year period? Yeah, I think so. But um, yeah, no, I think it'll it'll only strengthen. I mean, you know, our population is aging, um, right? Um, you know, and people like myself are leaving the profession. Uh, uh-huh. So we we really need healthcare workers. Um, and you know, with the onset of COVID and long COVID and people that you know still have debilitating, you know, conditions secondary to COVID. We, we need our health professionals more than ever. Right. How, well, I guess you're not going to get that. That's Phil's problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> How he's going to use 5 million right. in five years to, I mean, I'm wondering where that money goes and how do you in, increase those numbers? Does it mean, is it going to mean hiring more staff or is it going to be increasing uh, facilities? Um, they you, have actually hired you know, some new people. Right. Um, and um, so I think that'll continue. I think, um, you know, we're going to do some space arrangements. I think they're going to do some renovations for space, give us more equipment, um, things like that. But, you know, I think it's going to be an ongoing process. I mean, you know, our department, Health Sciences, is continually changing. We have to update. We all, a lot of us have external accreditors that we have to answer right. to. Um, so those standards keep changing, you know, on a yearly basis, sometimes we have to keep up with those. And, um, so there's, there's plenty of work that is done all the time on a yearly basis. Yeah. Since, you know, you did start here in 91 as an adjunct, Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like in those years? I mean, the college itself that you remember in the, when you came in. Yeah, we were in another building also, um, when I was an adjunct and we, we just didn't have. uh, Which one? Um, I think it was also the L. L. L? You were an L? Uh, yeah, and it was pretty, you know, dingy. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I mean, the photo lab was – one time they threw us out of there for a semester because the walls were uh, – there's mold in them. Oh, boy. And they, 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 not, they threw us out of there to replace all the walls. Yeah. And we didn't get back in, you know. Yeah, and the, quip, the equipment next was dated. 
Um, now we have really, really beautiful labs with updated equipment and um, they've, you know, the college has really been generous with us with replacing equipment, getting all the newest, um, you know, devices and machines that we need to teach the students. I mean, I'm really, really happy. Um, and the students, when they go to the clinic, when they go to their affiliations, they said, oh, yeah, we've we've seen this machine. We've seen this machine. Oh, yeah, we've used this piece of equipment because we have it at the college. And I think, you know, LaGuardia PTA program has an incredible reputation in the community. And, you know, they they know the type of education that they get here. I think it's it's true for any student. So we never have problems with placement. We never have problems with students getting jobs. Probably about half of our graduating class always has a job lined up by the time they graduate. So it's and we have, you know, very, very high pass rates. This um, our most recent pass rate on the national boards is 100 percent, which is really remarkable because most of our students are, you know, English as their second language. Right. And, um, you know, they they're just uh, it, it's very rigorous. And by the time they leave, we leave them with, you know, the ability to succeed. Uh, which is terrific. And not only do we exceed the national average in, in test scores, we also exceeded this past time the national average for the grades on the, on the exam. So, you know, it's really, it's really, these students are really incredible. It's impressive. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting because it, I, it came up in this issue of transfer because Again, if a senior college starts trying to dictate terms to a community college, how to ch I, I started saying to them, look, we've got a program where we are, you know, we have outrageous percentages in placement, not to mention they're coming in. I don't know how COVID affected this. I'm guessing that now they're, they're starting these positions with six figure salaries, right? Or close um, to it with an associate's degree they're still you know yeah i mean they're in the 50s to the 60s thousand i mean for an associate's oh i thought it was for some reason i thought it was higher than that i thought i thought they were coming in at like mid 90s um uh, maybe nursing but not, not no, oh, so, so, so that's physical therapy but it's still a oh, good okay. salary for someone with a an associate's degree and then and then on top of that you get you know benefits you get you know, sick time and vacation time and your insurance and, you know, all those things really add up. You know, they yeah, as an, yeah, just they as a job as some, for somebody who got their degree in art <laughs> and waited tables for many years. I, I think I, I would I had to be 56 before I was earning it <laughs> or something. <laughs> or I was 50. Let's say I was whatever. I was 50 before I was earning 50 something. I can't remember. Yeah, it's tough. It's Maybe tough. that's not the case, but it felt like it. Uh, so moving in, you you became a program director. That was pre Gale. Um, -Gale? That was a little bit pre Gale, yeah. So, so I what, started. What was, I I became the program director in 2012. Right. I, tw 2003. Sorry, until 2012. So. so what was that like? Because I know now program directors, the biggest response, the biggest feedback we get from program directors is they got too much to do. And they lack, they they don't get the kind of compensation that they, uh, you know, ideally sh sh could. I won't say should, for all the kind of work they're doing. Was it was it like it like that back then, or is this um, free? I, it was. You know, we get release time in health science for being a program director because we have an external accreditor. Right. So we have to prepare annual reports. Um, we get on site. Uh, visits every 10 years and, a, and you know, prior to that on-site visit, um, you have to prepare about 300 page document. Um, so, and we have to account for our graduation rates. We have to account for our pass rates. We have to account for our admission rates, um, our retention, our attrition. You know, there are just a lot of things on a daily basis that are really a challenge. I think for health science, if you have an external accreditor, so right. they're a little bit more generous with us, but we still, of course, have to teach and do the college service and do the department service, you know, the same. So it's, um, but at least you do get compensated, which is good. Yeah. I mean, again, and this is what always happens with coordinators is the question be becomes, Kent, if you can account for the amount of time you're putting in. I mean, with reassigned time, I always use the equation that Ann gave me, believe it or not. <laughs> so Ann would always say, like, for every one hour, for every one credit, 
you know, and classes being three credit classes. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, where the expectation would have been that you would have spent maybe 15 hours. Right. Uh, with, in instruction. Right. That doesn't include the office hours. Yeah. The equivalent would have been 25 hours of administrative yes. time. Yeah. That's I can't remember what, I think she threw that at me at one point when, when we were doing college now, uh, for yeah, whatever that's, reason. That's the formula they use. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you, you know, I've always gone to coordinators and say, okay, so can you account for those 25 hours so that, or can you account for more than those 25 hours so that we can make the case that, you might need a little more competition. And mm -hmm. the problem is it's the, those kinds of jobs are the kinds of jobs that, you know, you're working, you're not, you're not, it's, it's, you don't just sit down and put in a solid three hours, like in teaching where you go in and you come out three hours later, it's, you know, you're doing it all the time in, in right. various ways, in low level ways. I mean, uh, true. You know, you're just thinking, you're thinking about the program and thinking about, so it's very hard for them to lock those numbers in. So, what, what, how did you end up being asked to do curriculum? How did that happen? I mean, I know that Ann obviously yeah. played that role of, you know, being your uh, a benefactor of sorts. But I mean, had you already been doing a lot of work in that in that committee? Uh, no, <laughs> 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 I did not. <laughs> Um, which was a little frightening for me. And that's, that was my first thing I said to her was, but I, I was never on departmental curriculum. I was never, you know, involved in curriculum. I mean, we redesign our own curriculum, obviously, all the time, but I was never involved in that. So she said, more than that, you need a skill set. You need to be organized. You need to be meticulous. You need to be uh, personable. You need to be a good communicator. And so I think she saw more my skill set than than my abilities or my experience. And you know, it was a it was a work in progress. I mean, it you know, curriculum is like you know, you know how much I had to bother you with your curriculum. You know, it's it's Saturday, it's Sunday, it's Friday, it's every day of yeah. the week, um, just yeah. to make sure that we have an excellent you know product. Yeah, it was funny because the because as far as curriculum is concerned, I I wrote one. Core. I mean, I've I've been involved with rewriting many courses, and mm -hmm. and and one of the, and the only thing I'll say there has always been that those 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 Adobe those yeah. Adobe page maker files they drive me crazy with the formatting. I, I've always struggled with that, and I know that you know Poppy Slocum, who's the one for, right. for humanities, right. she told me, oh, we have new we have new forms, and we you do. know I can send them to you and try. So I'm, I look forward. To, yeah. to, to using them and seeing if they will be kind of different. But uh, I wrote one, I actually wrote, well, I, even that class, I would rewrote it. Bruce Brooks, the former mm -hmm. uh, yep. coordinator Bruce, yeah. of fine arts. And at the time was also doing photo came to me and said, look, I got this large format course. We've written it to some degree, but we never finished it. Here's the textbook. Here's, here's the thing, try to finish it. So I finished it. And then, and then all of a sudden I was told, okay, now you got to present it. And I can't remember John Williams, who used to be the former, he was a he was a music oh, professor. Music. Yeah, of course. Humanities. Yeah, I remember. I don't know if he was the curriculum, if he was the college wide uh, re, uh, chair, or if he was just for humanities. But we showed up, and Chris, and you know, I showed up with a camera, to, and I showed up with Polaroid film. We were going to take a picture and all this stuff. Only and you then I, go. <laughs> yeah, exactly me. I over, you know, they, they used to call me Hugo Demille in college because I would always <laughs> overdo all the productions. And, uh, but at one point I made some remark like this, you know, learning how to use this, this equipment will make them 300 and I mean, 33% uh, more employable. <laughs> trying to, I was trying to, I was trying to say at the time that like, you know, a third of the industry used these types of things, but really the number should have been like 50%. So that's the, that was the only, uh, t you know, obviously I've sat in on, on, and you know, it's interesting because, and I don't know if this happened on your, on your watch. But that was also the time that they had just rewritten the governance plan mm -hmm. and they had come up with that whole new approach where because I know in the old days what would happen is, you know, these, these classes, course proposals would show up in the Senate and people would start trying to rewrite them. They were right. trying to like, you know, copy edit them right, in the right. Senate and Bob Kahn, the former chair right. of, the, of the Senate, yep. came up with this notion of the consent uh, calendar consent calendar right. which, you know you had to pull 
pull it out or accept everything yep. in one shot. Yeah, which works which made well. Life a little easier, didn't it? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it, it you know it works really well because I, I have to tell you the committee is incredible. The they take their job so so seriously. They make my right. job much easier because they are really really incredible. And by the time something comes to curriculum. Um, you know, Deanne and I have revi- you know reviewed it and given our feedback of you know maybe change this or you know add an assignment you know whatever. I mean, we don't interfere with cur- you know curriculum design per se, right. but more the administrative part of it. Does it make sense? You know, is it is there enough work for three credits? Um, is there equipment needed? You know, things like that. And um, but by the time it comes back to curriculum, it's pretty clean. And then you have you sit around a table and present to 13 people and then they give further input, which is really fantastic because, you know, English people say something and then the science people say something. And then, you know, did you think maybe you needed a math prerequisite? You know, the math people will speak up. So after curriculum, by the time it goes to Senate, I think it's really an excellent product. Yeah. And I think I, the Senate at this point trusts us as a committee that when it comes to them, it, it's really a nice, you know, it's a nice package and they review it. And sometimes I get things that are pulled off, but not too often, which is nice. It's a rarity. By the way, it's, it's, we're at the, I don't know if I mentioned this in the format, we're at the half hour mark. And so I just want to do a quick station ID. Uh, the show is what's going on. I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez here on LaGuardia web radio. And uh, my guest today is Professor Deborah Engel of the Department of Health Sciences in the Division of Academic Affairs. And Professor Engel will be retiring after many years of service, and a good portion of which she has spent as the chair of the college-wide uh, curriculum committee of the LaGuardia College Senate. Uh, so we've talked a lot about different roles, and hopefully I, we haven't, I haven't stolen the thunder. But this is the part of the show, we call it the greatest hits, where you talk about some of the things that you feel, and it doesn't have to be about anything we've talked about thus far, or could be, uh, that you feel, you know, uh, were important things that you did or things you enjoyed doing uh, while here at the college. A lot. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. You know, um, you know, the thing is that when I came to LaGuardia, I was a clinician, right? I was not a professor. I didn't have a PhD. I didn't have Um, academic teaching knowledge. And so I really relied on my colleagues and I relied on the seminars offered by the college. And so for years and years and years, and probably up until just a few years ago, I was taking, you know, Center for Teaching and Learning uh, courses, you know, on curriculum design, on experiential learning, on, you know, how do you teach, how do you design assignments? How do you charrette your assignments? I mean, I just like every year, I just signed up for something different. And I think it really improved my teaching. Um, I also was um, on the ground floor of the capstone. I was on the original team to research what a capstone course was. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, capstone is is a culmination of your education and your program. And um, it is done towards the end of the curriculum. And so we never had you know, capstone courses and very few community colleges had capstone courses at that time. It was probably, I don't know, maybe 15 to 18 years ago. And so we researched, there were six of us and we researched colleges nationally. And we found that, you know, a lot of the senior colleges had the idea, but not the, the, um, you know, the community colleges. And so that was a great report. And after that, you know, we designed a Center for Teaching and Learning capstone experience course, and then it was redesigning the capstone, and then it was, I led a capstone <laughs> seminar. <laughs> so right. that was, you know, that was nice to be at the very beginning of developing capstone to, you know, what it looks like today and kind of in curriculum, making sure everyone does have a capstone course. And there's writing intensive and there's staged assignments and, it really looks like something that culminates the experience in that specific program. So that's that's been very cool. Um, Professor Mello <laughs> put me on a um, redesigning or realignment of student affairs and academic affairs. That was about probably 10 years ago. Um, and a lot of really nice initiatives came out of that. Um, one being the Wellness Center. Um, we didn't have a Wellness Center back then. We had, um, 
you know, a counseling department, which was terrific, but we didn't have a comprehensive wellness center. And so the college really listened to faculty's frustrations about, you know, we have students with a lot of needs. What, what do we do with them? Where do we send them? How do we handle it? And so that whole wellness center came out of that realignment between academic affairs and student affairs. So that was very, very cool also. Um, I was also on the core team of Middle States um, <laughs> 12 years ago. Right. With, this one, with, but with, the one with, before. Uh, now I was on a standard, but I was really on that core team of, of Middle States. So that was also a huge, huge experience. With Gordon. Uh, and Gordon was chair. With Gordon, exactly. With Gordon. So that was amazing. And I learned a lot. Again, I don't know why I got on that committee, but they put me there. Anne. <laughs> and yeah, maybe <laughs> Anne and Gail and Paul. And, you know, I've had a lot of good, good mentors here and people that have put me into projects. And luckily it's worked out. <laughs> right. So um, those are probably the big kind of, um, you know, stars that I've been part of, which is, you know, really, I mean, every year it's something different and something else to get excited about. And, you know, I've done tons of presentations and national presentations, and I've been part of ALT, the assessment leadership team, for many, many years. Um, I was actually the faculty. What? No, wait a minute. Back up now. Yep. ALT? What, what is what is Assessment this? leadership is team. Oh, okay, within the Center for Teaching and Learning. Right, right. That's the team that does the benchmark readings. And, you know, I was also in the on the ground with actually Marissa and Liz Clark, Marissa Clages and Liz Clark back in the days, um, we developed the um, writing rubric, the first one. Oh. And then after that, I was on the redesign of the rubric team <laughs> through the assessment leadership team. So that that was really, really fun too. Um, it was totally out of my realm of co comfort and, you know, didn't know much about <laughs> writing right. and, and we did national presentations together and we traveled and, and that was really, really fun work. So, um, you know, they're, they're just, I don't know, I, I, I've just been very, very blessed here. I've been very, very lucky to put into situations and committees where I've been able to make a difference. I got to tell you, uh, it's interesting. I listen to you and talking about th these things being fun. I know a lot of people <laughs> who not only would not want to be on the organizational committee, they also hide from having to, in a sense, answer to some of the expectations that come out of many of the, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't even remember. I mean, I, I was here when I guess, and I don't know, maybe I was an adjunct at the time when capstones began. But I find it fascinating because, for example, in the arts, I, you know, experience, like you said, in my senior uh, college, there certainly was a capstone experience. That was what, how you grad, you know, uh, we called it a BFA. Right. And you had to basically defend your work. You showed your work, you defended it, you wrote a thesis, you did an exhibition, and uh, there had been, you know, I don't remember that in my undergraduate at all. You just kind of took a bunch of classes and left. Right. And, or, and or certainly I say, didn't no, exist in, in community in the, colleges. In community, that's what I mean, community <laughs> college. Yeah. I mean, community college, yeah. it didn't exist. And, uh, but when I finally got a chance to teach it, and I'm, you know, you don't know this about me, but in like fine arts and also sometimes in photo but mostly in fine arts i i was i was joke i'm uh i'm the travis bickle you know the character from taxi oh. uh the, the film by martin scorsese where they ask him uh, hey well well were you driving the bronx you know we, you know staten island and he says sure we will you, you drive at night we you know weekends he's like you know anywhere anytime is the phrase he and so I would get called in, you know, having you know, say, okay, Hugh, we want you to teach this, you know, somebody's at uh, uh, going to be taking sabbatical or they're, or they're, you know, are they're, uh, you know, they're re they've gotten release time and we need you, uh, some, whatever it was, so we need you to to teach this and I would teach and and I treated that capstone, you know, obviously I'm following the course proposal and everything, but I treated it like a little, I called it my AFA. Mm, my associates in yeah. fine art and so the kids did an exhibition that's great and they wrote a thesis of sorts 10 page thesis they wrote you know they uh 
obviously they had to build the e-portfolio, which by the way, you left out of all of those, just all of those. That's and true. I know the whole e-portfolio experience. Yeah. The e-portfolio. And I know who would bring it up every time. Yeah. Yeah. Part <laughs> of it. Of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I was also but, involved in that too. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you know, these, you know, because the, the capstone now is, e-portfolio is an integral yeah, piece of it. For sure. Uh, whether, whether people, you know, know it or not. Yeah. You know, they believe it or not, there are some programs that don't know it. Uh, that's not part of their capstone, but uh, I made it part of that. Yeah, I think I think the one. But what I'm saying is that the Go things ahead. you're talking about, you had a lot of fun in organizing them. Yeah. Other people would 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 run away from that, and it's again all these skills that Ann saw in you that made you the chair of curriculum committee. Yeah. That you brought. And now I start remembering and I start thinking like every time there was a presentation, you were there yeah. standing with <laughs> the people <laughs> that were talking. It's true. Usually wearing a sweater. Yeah. It's very true. <laughs> or a scarf. <laughs> right. Scarf and, and uh, sweater. <laughs> and I remember being in those audiences because yeah. I was always, you know, I would always come along late. I, you know, I'd come along later for, for execution's sake, <laughs> particularly in in troublesome programs that that you know we're fighting tooth and nail through the process yeah no it's it's been it's you know i don't know i just i just love it here i mean the college is just an amazing place and dare to do more captures everything i mean laguardia always you know did things and was nationally recognized um they had right. so many initiatives so many projects so many opportunities. Um, it was just never boring here at all. As long as you participated and you said yes, when you got that email from Dr. Mello, <laughs> dear Deborah. Right. Yeah. See, I never got and those. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I was, yeah, you were, I'm, I'm sure you were one of the folks at the vision summit at the botanical gardens. Right. Were you not? Right. I wasn't invited. <laughs> I, don't know. I was on I was on Gail's shortlist. Thank goodness, and Paul too. Um, I really credit and Anne, <laughs> and uh, I credit them. They they gave me a lot of opportunities, you know, in the early days. And then you know, like you know, Dean Miller. I just love working with her. She's she's so inspirational and organized and pleasant. And you know, I've just you know I've had the opportunity, especially I guess with curriculum and with the projects, to meet people from all over the college and work with them. Right. Um, and s instead of just always being with health science people. So that, that's been great for me. So at, in, as you transition out of all of these different roles you were in, do you see, do you think this is something that's going to be perpetuated here at the college, especially with a, a new president, a new provost? I mean, how do you see that transition? I, I think the the new administration is is certainly um, they should be credited for listening. Uh, they're really good listeners, I think, and I I didn't see that either of them come in and want to change everything, which is great. Um, which means that they see the value in Laguardia, and they see that there's great stuff happening here. Um, so I, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about so many of those initiatives continuing. Yeah, it's funny because sometimes, you know, the, one of the president's favorite gags or favorite one-liners is calling us LaGuardia Committee College. Yeah. That's... Because he says that, <laughs> you know, we have so many committees. That's and, true. you know, it's funny because he's put me on a couple of them, oh. or at least he's asked me to be a part <laughs> of a couple that he created after getting here. Uh -huh. But he says, you know, he calls us LaGuardia Committee College. And, you know, he's talking to the wrong guy because, it's, I mean, Michael Rodriguez, who was my chair for about nine years, and actually put me on the Senate initially because he, he we knew each other from undergraduate years. And he, you know, I'd been involved, been mixed up with Senates at that level. You know, he would laugh at me all the time because, you know, I would tell him about these meetings I was going to. And he'd say, well, what is, what's that meeting about? And he'd say, well, that meeting is a, is a committee that deals with the bigger committee. You know, like it's the committee that's going to deal with the Senate or whatever it was. Uh, he says, so you're going to a committee about, a, about committees. <laughs> and I was a chair of the committee of committees at one point. Yeah, and he I got a big thing. laugh out of that. <laughs> Back before that was a very well-formed role. Like now it's actually... Like they actually have people in that committee at the college senate level. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good which is very, committee. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, so th 
So I'm, I'm a person, I don't have a problem with going to meeting after meeting because like you have said, it's like, you know, things we're, we're trying to make things better. We're yeah. trying to figure things yes. out. We're trying yes. to, but I got to tell you a lot of people like you tell them we're going to have a committee. In fact, Bruce Brooks, again, here's when I used to, when I first started attending department meetings and I think I had attended the humanities department meeting, even before I was full time, I might've just shown up for one time as an adjunct. And he said to me, if you're smart, you won't say anything. And that way the meeting will go faster <laughs> because every time anybody says anything at a, at a meeting, that somebody's got to respond. Right. Right. And then and and so, new ideas come forward and new projects. <laughs> and, and, we, and again, you know, we struggle to find people to do those. I mean, we'll, 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 we'll get somebody, but you know, again, there's not, some people were People are not gonna. I, I think it was uh, was it John Sheen mm -hmm. who was the chair of my uh, during the first time when Gordon did Middle States. He was the chair of one. I forget what they call it. Chapter it's standards. I think yeah. standard. He was, a, and I can't remember what standard ours was. I think ours was actually curriculum. Believe it or not, because I remember we collected curriculum at the time. And he says, you know, LaGuardia, you know, if you're prepared to volunteer to do something, LaGuardia is prepared to let you do that it. Is for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> so you better be careful. That's because, sure. Uh, but I, I like that. I like that about LaGuardia. Like they expect yeah. service, you know. Well, look, for somebody like me who has a lot of ideas and right. wants to do stuff, it's worked out for me too. Yeah. Uh, we're moving into that the last quarter hour, and this is the one where uh, we we would have taken questions, but the only thing that's been going on uh, on the on the chat right now is I think somebody had an ad on there that's somebody pulled off. So there are no questions right now, but actually there are eleven people watching. Yay! Which I got to. <laughs> I got to tell you, maybe it's my family. Time, <laughs> well, no, my it's family and friends, I don't know. <laughs> to, have, to have people in, to watch us in real, most people watch us in the archive. So have, yeah. to have that many real time people watching you, it, it's a tribute to you. Thank you. <laughs> Either that or they have nothing else to do because they've done their grades. Right. But <laughs> so this is uh, an opportunity for you to talk about one of two, one of two things or both, which is what you plan to do in moving forward now that you're going to say goodbye to us, but also uh, advice you would give to, to those of us who are going to continue to work here uh, to, to do the work that you've been doing for 30 years. Yeah, so I don't have any definitive plans. Um, and um, everybody asks me, like, what are you going to do now? So I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's not like I have a big plan. Um, the reason I'm retiring is my age and, you know, um, my son graduated from medical school and is in residency. So he's, he's off the payroll. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. TAA right. Cref has been great to me here and, you know, I have good support system. So it, it just seemed like, you know, I'm young, you know, I'm healthy and, and I want to have some time to myself because curriculum really is seven days a week. Um, plus teaching, plus, you know, you know, being in a program that's very intense. So, um, and a lot of my friends have retired, so I just wanted to have more time to myself, but I'd love to get back to, to treating patients because I haven't, you know, treated patients, um, because of COVID. I mean, before that I was doing home care and I was doing private cases, um, but I haven't been able to, to get into treatment very much. Um, so I'd like to do that and I'd like to do things that are flexible. Friends of mine from NYU already asked me to do some seminars for them on the relationship between a, a, a doctorate in physical therapy and the physical therapist assistant. So I'll be, be doing some work with them to try to get them to, um, increase that, you know, relationship between the two professionals. Um, I, we just took a CPR training instructor course. Um, so we got a grant through our program. And so I'd like to maybe explore that a little bit more about, you know, teaching CPR, um, through this company. Um, and actually a friend of mine the other day said, you know, from LIU said, uh, I think we need a cardiac rehab, uh, teaching assistant in the fall. Do you want to think about it? <laughs> so who knows? I mean, you know, the beauty is that, you know, I have clinical options. I have academic options. I, I'm, I'm involved in my professional organization. I've been very active and I hold, uh, I'm, I'm the chapter secretary. So I have a lot of those connections 
with, uh, you know, physical therapists in the state and physical therapist assistants. So there, there's a lot of options, but I, I sort of want to um, not be scheduled for something every day. <laughs> and I want to relax a little bit and I want to travel a little bit, spend time with, you know, my family and my friends. Um, but I'm sure things will, I, I mean, I'm not the type to sit around. So, I mean, as you can see from my professional <laughs> career, <laughs> Um, I, it's not like I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV, but you know, I'll find things that, you know, volunteer even I have just haven't had time to do that. But as far as advice, um, I would say, you know, for, for people just, you know, there's so many things going on here. I think there's something for everyone. Um, so just find your niche, um, find your people, find your niche, learn, grow. Um, I, you know, I learn something new every day here. Um, and so, um, I would say just, you know, talk to your chair, find out what's happening. Like you said, if you want to be on a committee, they'd, they'd be happy to have you, um, find your skill set, and, um, you know, the people here are just amazing. They're great mentors throughout. Well, you know, I think that that's it, you, that you use that word at the very end because, I mean, some people would look at your relationship with Aunt Fibel and they'd say like, oh, you know, she, you know, she had somebody in power who helped her in, to move to, into all these different roles. Or someone could say, you know, she had a mentor. Yeah. She had a great mentor. And on top of everything else, that mentor also, you know, was able to, uh, to help you move into these roles. And, you know, I think because when you when you talked about that, I, I I started thinking about a lot of new faculty, and they're all running around. I mean, everybody, like people who show up, they know they they're student centered, ideally, right? Uh, if they're scholars, they have they certainly have notions about what they want to be doing with their scholarship. And of course, until you start teaching, you really don't know what you need to know about that process yeah. either i mean most people come in i've always said this we all of us come in we teach the way we were taught and but the problem is that that was five years ago right at least yeah for sure and probably doesn't work anymore in, with whatever population you're engaging with at any given time but when you get to that last level which is the level that kicks in in the final years, particularly for faculty in the, in the ideas of tenure and promotion, uh, is the leadership role, which calls for, or at least let's call this uh, college service. This is one that people struggle with a lot. And uh, I mean, I, I guess maybe I was fortunate in that Michael said, hey, why don't you go do Senate? I mean, the truth is nobody wanted to do it. And in fact, I started showing up as an alternate and Gary Richmond, who was the original senator, mm -hmm. wasn't coming to the meeting. He went to like one meeting and then stopped showing up when I was going and then handed it over to me. I was the senator within a year. Uh, but maybe that was an, another one of those opportunities where I had a, I mean, Michael was certainly a mentor to me based on our relationship. But this is, for me, it's, I, I've talked, I talked about it when I even went up for full professor, the importance of developing those types of relationships either formally or informally because i think that junior faculty this is the biggest struggle they have i think yeah and finding their role right in the in the place yeah but people are so nice here yeah i mean i've you know i've worked in healthcare and you know i had a great experience in healthcare i mean but i mean people have been so collegial and so cooperative i mean i've never felt here you know people were competitive or trying to get something over you or, you know, jealousy or anything like that. I've, you know, I just, you know, I just think the people here are wonderful. Yeah. Maybe the problem is that people aren't used to that <laughs> <laughs> and they actually, I mean, it was, it was fast and there was a, so, so in my, again, I'm in my office and I overhear uh, the, the woman who oversees our office finding something for someone, a, a new faculty member who needed something on the fly. And I walk, you know, I walked out to do something in the main office and I took, the, I, I, you know, as, as an aside to them, I said, well, you know, you can go to our secretary and, th and she will give you anything you want. Like as far as, you know, uh, 
office supplies, anything like that. And the response was a kind of a, yeah, I know, you know, uh, but she's not here. And I said, oh, I, you know, I know. I couldn't help but walk away and feel like, God, I feel like I just insulted him by <laughs> pointing out some small thing that I thought was, you know, helpful. But I don't know how he took it. Maybe I was, uh, maybe, you know, it could be me too. I'm a, I'm, I'm, some, I've been accused of being too helpful on more than one occasion. But uh, <laughs> again, it's that people have to be ready to accept help. And I don't know if they realize, when we get junior faculty in here, they don't realize, not, we expect them to need help and we're ready to give it to them in anything they need. But they have yeah. to be ready to ask for it, know they need it, and accept it. Yeah, and I, I've just been really lucky with the faculty I work with. Um, you know, the department faculty, but especially my programmatic, you know, faculty, I want to really give a huge shout out to them. I mean, it's, you know, we meet almost daily <laughs> to discuss, you know, what's happening and, and to solve problems together. And we do everything together. And, you know, they're my lifelong friends. I mean, but uh, they're just amazing, amazing individuals um, with the big passion for the field and a big passion for teaching and doing everything possible for student success. So I've been just so lucky to be a part of this team. And, and you know, we've all been together, almost some of us been together for 20 years. So it's, it's a, it works. It's a, it's a department or it's a program that really works well. Yeah. You've already, you've beat me to the punch here and cause we're, we're almost out of time and I wanted to give you an opportunity to, any last shout outs or thank yous oh, yes. or anything you'd like to say that you haven't had a chance to say yet? Yeah, especially to my faculty. I mean, you know, Clarence and May and, um, you know, Virginia and Carlos, um, you know, that's our team. And just to the whole department, uh, Phil's been always, always supportive. Um, Dion has been amazing, amazing, amazing to work with, um, despite all the you know, two and three hour meetings that I have with her on a weekly basis. We laugh and we joke and we get the work done. Um, thankful to Priyantha for taking over. Thankful to the curriculum team. Always has been a fantastic team. Um, you know, Marissa, Liz, those guys, um, Center for Teaching and Learning, everybody in the Center for Teaching and Learning is just fantastic. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I, I just never had a disagreement in all those years, never had a, a tense moment or a disagreement or, you know, an argument with anyone. And it's just, you know, I just, it's such a wonderful, wonderful work environment, really. And I thank everybody um, for that because it's, it's not easy um, to be in a, such an intense environment and still keep your sense of humor and your passion and your compassion. So I, I just, I really, really love this, this, this institution. <laughs> okay. And on that, I want to just thank you for being on the show, for doing your exit interview. Uh, you know, thank not every, you. not everybody is willing to do it. And I'm always grateful to those who, who do. And uh, so you've, you've been watching uh, what's going on here with uh, Hugo Fernandez, our hundredth episode with my engineer, Christopher Pope behind the scenes. Uh, and today we've been talking to professor Deborah Engel of the department of health sciences in the Division of Academic Affairs. Uh, Professor Engel will be retiring after many years of service, a good portion of which she was has spent as the chair of the college-wide curriculum committee of the LaGuardia College Senate. So thanks to all who are watching, the 11, uh, all who are watching and who, all who will listen. Uh, and happy holidays from LaGuardia Web Radio. Thanks. Thanks, Hugo. Always so, a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. You too. And Chris, please take us out as we came in with Mr. Adams. <laughs>